um, yeah, we, we want to pick the best team. Um, you've always got to try and have a little bit of an eye to the future and um, and what's coming up at the same time. And, uh, just one on. uh, I think Pat was talking yesterday about how you'd spoken pre-series about preserving the record against India never having lost a series at home against them. Um, how much does that uh, weigh on minds or, or motivate minds um, at the back end of the series when you're tired, I suppose? Yeah, none for me, personally. I think other guys may use it, but um, my focus has been on us improving and, and us playing the best possible cricket we can and, and when we haven't, making sure we've learned from it. So, um, again, we want to win every test match we play in. Um, at times, it's not always possible. Uh, we're playing against the best test team in the world at the moment who are, who are playing really well. So, um, yeah, look, I haven't thought too much about losing this series, that's for sure. We want to win. We want to win this series. Um, but yeah, some guys will use different things to motivate them. But as I said, my motivation is is making sure we're improving, making sure we're really competitive at all times, and um, and making sure we put up a really good fight against India. And we know if we do it for long enough, we showed in Perth that that we can win. So that's our focus. I guess the level of change that happened to the team meant that this was always going to be a, a fairly long process, and there was going to be ups and downs in between. But from where you sit, where do you see the, the how the trend line is going, and how? far along the continuum do you think you are? Um, yeah, well, we're con constantly a work in progress. Um, I think f the difficult thing after Perth was the more the external stuff. I think for a younger group, um, you know, we, we'd gone from a team that was, was no good to, to all of a sudden really good, and then in a matter of a test match, we're back down here. So again, as I said before, it's about trying to keep a bit of um, perspective and a bit of reality of, of where we're at. Um, again, I'm repeating myself a little bit, but the main thing for us is that we're improving um, I think we're showing signs of, of getting better. Um, I think in the last test, whilst our batters didn't set the world on fire, most guys got to start and show that, that they can succeed at this level. So um, this test is going to be a real focus from our batting group. We, we know we're not going to win too many test matches without scoring hundreds, so that's something we've spoken about, something we're really keen to improve and address. Um, yeah, and, and again, as I said in the last few tests, the silver lining is that you know, in a few months' time, we, we can have some world-class players available and we're going to have some younger guys that have had eight to ten tests under their belt. So um, it's going to be a great thing for Australian cricket. Just an extension on the hundreds point you made. It was four made last year, three of them in this test a year ago. Are you leaving it up to the individual players to find answers to converting those starts or is it a collective thing that the batting units are speaking about, sharing ideas, things they learn? Um, yeah, a bit of both. I think, obviously, guys are, who are playing test cricket want to, want to be scoring hundreds, so it's something that batters are constantly talking about. Um, but it's it's up to the individual as well. Some guys want to be reminded of certain things when they're in the middle. Someone like Wisman just wants to, to go out and bat, so it's about knowing your players, knowing who you're batting with at the other end and, um, and doing whatever, um, I suppose, suits them and, and keeps them in... Um, in the zone, I guess, a little bit. Um, and as I've said before as well, the, the Indian attack has been really disciplined and, and forced mistakes out of us. So um, it's just being aware of each other's strengths and weaknesses and, and while you're out there batting with guys, trying to trying to remind them of them and, and trying to keep them on track. Uh, Tim, uh, you saw close hand last year, Mitch Marsh, and how well he batted. Um, what's he... Well, what was he doing last year apart from scoring runs that he's not doing this year? Is there anything technique-wise, patience, anything in his attitude? Um, no, I don't think so. I think um, last year, um, I think I touched on it a bit yesterday, last year he was batting at times when Steve Smith or David Warner or Usman Quadra had scored runs and was facing tired, tired bowlers. And um, whilst there's going to be times that Mitch is going to have to go out and, and score runs at number six, um, from four for 60, you'd hope that he's not going in as much as he is at the moment under that sort of scrutiny. And um, So there's a, there's a bit of two things to it. One, we're not getting enough runs in our top order and, and if we do that, we know how dangerous Mitch can be. Um, and two, Mitch knows he's, he needs to improve when he does have to go in when we're four for 50 and, and find ways to succeed in that situation as well. So, um, but, but he's not doing anything different training-wise. I think, like anyone else at the moment, he's probably a little bit lower on, on confidence than he was at this time last year but um, you know he's one he's one good session of batting or um, an hour of batting away from from finding that again and we know when he does he can be um, he can be very dangerous at test level um, at the top of the order I mean are you prepared if you do um, leave him out 
for for the batting order to be reshuffled quite a bit with blokes moving up? Is that a something that you, as a selection panel, would be happy to take into this test? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think we're happy to to change it a little bit. I think you don't want to be changing too much. Um, we want to try and settle guys that we think are going to play a bit more long term in positions. Um, you know, looking forward into the next series and then and then into the Ashes, we want to settle guys in their positions. So. Um, as, as little a disruption as we can have to that order, uh, the better in that sense. Um, but as I said before, at the same time, we've got to find the best 11, the best combination of that 11 to win this test as well. So it's a bit of a balancing act. Uh, and Tim, considering the way you've been batting and the number of balls you've faced in this series, has there at any point been any consideration where you've th thought about like promoting yourself, uh, maybe break up the whole left-hander nexus that exists in that middle order, but just as captain, have you felt like you know it should just go up and? Yeah, it's it's. I've had some discussions around that. Uh, may happen, may not. Um, but yeah, I'm. i certainly haven't been setting the world on fire. I, I need to sort of cash in on my starts as well. So I'm no different to the the other guys in our in our top six. And um, you know, I've just got to play my role. Whether that's at seven, whether it's at six, whether it's at five, it it, it won't change the way we go about it. Manus, um coming back into the squad since Melbourne, can you tell us what your messaging has been to him and what has he brought to the team uh, over the past couple of days leading into tomorrow? Uh, lots of chat, lots of energy. He doesn't shut up, Manus, but um, well, I think at the end of a long series, his, his energy um, has been great to have him around the group the last few days. Uh, we know how, how good a cricketer he is. Um, he's, he's really skilled in all all facets of the game, so... Um, if he plays tomorrow, we know he, he brings, you know, if the conditions suit, he showed in the UAEs, his leg spin's improved out of sight. Um, and I suppose you, it, you're almost leaning towards him now at test level as a bit of an all-round option, which is um, a really good package for us. Ashwin's been ruled out of this test match. How much of a blow do you think it'll be to India, given the conditions here? Um, yeah, it's good news. <laughs> um, I saw him bowl yesterday and he was batting in Melbourne, so I'm surprised he's not playing, but... Um, yeah, look, I think conditions here would, would have suited him really nicely. Um, it normally spins quite a bit, and obviously with his height as well, he would have been a handful. So um, I think some of our batters will be pretty happy to hear that news when they come to training today. But, um, look, I, we know they've got some, some other spinners in their squad, Kaldeep, who's, who's a bit younger, but um, he's got some serious talent as well. And obviously Jadeja did the job for him in, in Melbourne, so they've got no shortage of, of options to replace him. Tim, you mentioned yesterday... Um you thanked the Indian team for their contribution to rebuilding the Australian uh, yeah. public place in the game. Um, how do you think the Australian public will welcome back the three bat players, obviously David and Steve in particular, and yeah. would you encourage them to welcome them with open arms? Yeah, I think so. Um, I hope they're, they're welcome back. I mean, everyone's entitled to their opinion and will have a, a different view on it. But, um, yeah, I think once they've done their time, that um, I'm certainly very hopeful that the Australian public and the cricketing public in general will, will welcome those three guys back and, and give them a, a fair chance at, um, at coming back into the scene. Um, I suppose, yeah, just, just to be treated like no other cricketer is, to be fair. Like all other cricketers are, sorry. Um, Tim, just uh, on uh, Peter Hanscom, if he's to come back into the team, uh, just here, um, what's changed from him being left out of the last test to potentially come back in here? Yeah, uh, probably conditions. Um, as we've heard, it, it, we think it will spin here. So um, if, if India were to play two spinners, or we think India were to play two spinners, I think Pete can be a really important player for us. Um, we know how good a player a spin is. Um, yeah, so I think that's, again, one of the discussions we'll be having today is, is whether we think India will go that way, and, and if they are, are we prepared to, to bring him back in? And, um, but, yeah, I'm sure if he does, he's... You know, as I said, he's an excellent player of spin and um, contributes a lot to the group in the field and, and around the team as well. So, um, again, a bit like Marnus, he's, he's a very good package. He's a good person to have around our team and um, we hope that when he does play again, he, he scores a lot of runs. Last question. Um, Tim, I just wanted to check in terms of, like, if Aaron is demoted down the order or, or dropped, will it be Osman opening? And um, I suppose, can you just talk a bit about his sort of resilience in this series, given what happened yeah. at the start and even a couple of days ago with his yeah. brother getting arrested again? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, Aussie's opening record in Test cricket is, is very good. So, and, and he's been on record, I think, a few times saying he's not too fussed where he bats it, whether it's one or, or three. So, um, yeah, his record's great. If, if that's the way we go, Usman will 
as he always does, he'll go out and give his all. And um, yeah, I think the way he's handled the last month or so um, has been exemplary. So um, it's a real credit to him. Thanks, everyone.